Not everyone. So, inside of a electrical box, the code specifies that the wire is supposed to be a minimum of six inches long from where it leaves, enters the box, which is right there. That's the minimum. Um, however, with an opening, depending on the size of it, that can be stretched to eight. I typically prefer my wire to be longer anyway, just because why fight it? So, what I've seen lots of people do when they make up a ground, and they will do it incorrectly, but, and they, they make tools for this, stripping the wires. Uh, I just personally, if, if you don't have a real steady hand, you should probably not use a razor blade because you can easily get off and you'll skin the neutral or the hot leg, which you do not want to do. But the ground wire is in the middle. So that's the way those tools are designed. They're designed based off of that fact. So they will make sure that your cut is dead in the middle. But I've done this lots of times. I just use a knife. What I have seen lots of people do when they go to make up these, uh, make up a ground, is they'll cut these wires off way back here because they don't want a bunch of extra wire. But that is a code violation because once they do that, they only have four inches of wire, and that is not code. Another way that different people will may do it, and I have done this before, is they might fold it up all the way up to the top. And then out and do that. Now, when you do that, you do have six inches because you got about three and a half and then you come out another four. So you have seven, which meets code. But I have found much simpler way of doing it. Uh, so you need a ground for your device. So again, you can cut it off here. You'll have enough and then add a pigtail. That works. But another way to do it, and to make sure, is you don't need to cut this wire at all. I don't even use a pair of wire strippers when I'm making up grounds in a box. Simply fold it up, fold it down, and you have all that length of wire still. The other one, if you don't cut it and you fold it and crimp it down, then you can use a regular wire nut. And it will still meet code because it wasn't cut. It's still a solid piece of wire. However, I prefer... Just simply fold it like that so it keeps it, you still the full length, and then use one of these green wire nuts specifically designed for ground. You can only use it on a ground because the wire needs to slide all the way through and the ground's the only one that does not have a coating on it. So, and it tightens it right down. And all wires are still the complete full length. Uh, I may cut them off here later, and that still meets the requirement. We got about nine inches that that meets the code but i typically will leave them long ahead of time because anyone doing sheetrock or anything if they end up bumping up against that wire with their little blades while they're trying to cut around the box then they might damage it the other thing that i will usually do with an east wing hammer the reason i like the east wing is because the end of it is very soft and very flat so what I'll do is I'll just take the end of it, it doesn't hurt the wire, and I'll just press them all back in there. That just keeps them way back in there. The Dremel tool that you like to use doesn't reach that far. If they use a keyhole saw, they can still hit it, but uh, most sheet rockers will not do that anymore. So now we've uh, done a receptacle box, which is very simple because all it really is is, the, is a ground. We will now go ahead and hook up some standardized switching, which is pretty easy as well. So in this case, what we have, and I will a lot of times go ahead and label before I strip the wires back so I know where they're coming from. I usually do it in larger boxes more than in this, and this one I really don't need to. I know what they are. Uh, this wire coming in from the bottom right over here is a hot leg. So you just put a J there for a hot leg. The one going up here is just a jumper. What the uh, jumper means is it's simply taking power from here to another switch box or other device. And then this one right here, um, like I ran it and he labeled it, it goes up to the fan. 
So we just put an F up there on there for the fan. So we just got an H for hot. And then where it comes in the box, we got jumper and fan. So it just makes it easy to, after you strip the wires back and the labels are all gone, know what's what. In this case, this 14.3 is not being used for a three-way. What it is, is we have a wire that will go to control the fan, and we have a wire that will go up there to control the light. So if they want to switch them separately, they can. Uh, these days, a lot of times people will use a remote control instead, and in that case, one of these switches will end up doing absolutely nothing. But I still like to give the option in case. Personally, I myself do not like the remotes. Uh, in my opinion, they never, they don't last very well. And they end up work, stopping, the, their functionality quits working very shortly afterward. So in this case, we need two grounds because we got two switches. So I do the mixture of the two things from the device. I fold, I, I'll simply uh, fold them across to get more space and to get them away from the other wires. It just makes it easier to make the box neat. And then I'd simply fold that so it was never cut. Then I will pick because we do have our six inches we need and we have an extra wire here. I'm just going to cut that one off the, the uh, same length as the, where I folded the one. You want it to come past the, other, the folded one just ever so slightly, not, but just barely, barely. That will help it seat good in the wire nut. Then we'll just take our green wire nut, slide it on through the other one over that remaining wire, and twist it all on there. Now you still have the amount of wire you need for code on the one that is cut. And the other ones are all nice and twisted. And then I'll simply fold this up out the way, trying to form the wires where it'll be easy later. So the more, the neater you do this box, the much easier it is to put in switches later. Uh, it used to be, I would simply make up all the neutrals in the box first on a switch box. The reason I would do that is because then once you shove it, you push it in the back, it's not needed any longer but now a lot of the uh, Alexa style switches and all the different internet communicating switches they those switches need to have a neutral so I will usually eyeball this but I'm going to do it for the purposes of the video we need a minimum of six inches from where these enter the box and I've got them coming out pretty similar to there so I will usually do a little extra so we'll give it seven that's Typically where I end up cutting it. I say I'll usually just eyeball that. I've just I've done this plenty of times. Let me try to see. Maybe you can see a little better that way, hopefully. I just kind of looked at the back of the camera and noticed that it was kind of up on there when I tried to do that. So that way maybe I won't have to zoom it as much. So you don't have to twist them with a pair of Lyman's pliers if you have to do that. So all those wires should be, see how nice and neat they are, all in line with each other. If you get them good there and you get them kind of slightly pre-twisted, then they should twist together nicely. If you are not used to doing this, it can be a good idea to go ahead and use the Lyman's pliers to pre-twist those wires ahead of time to make sure that you know they got a good connection before you put the wire nut on. So now the other thing we got, so we got the wire neutral. Like I said, I'll still usually do it there and I'll put it in the back because that way if they're not needing it, it's, it's not needed, I will save the hot leg for last because the hots for the switches are always going to be needed, of course for that switch so again i estimate it it's going to be about seven inches right there gives us a little extra and i'll keep these wires run them long slightly long on purpose so we can do that 
and use the same wires that we cut off just fold them about there make sure they're about the same length and get them there so they say i'll usually just use a wire nut but i will show you like if you're using lyman's pliers you don't want to twist it super heavy but you can get them and make sure it's nice and good so it'll hold there on its own and then go ahead and add your wire nut fold that up in there again press them down in there get them as good as you can i will then usually pick the longest of the two so this one's longer and i will fold that one to the other side of the box so in the end when we go to put switches in here i like to do this just because it makes it real easy for any one of my guys even if they don't know electrical very well they can still come in and throw a switch in because a switch is very easy as far as especially a standard one you just got three wires the ground obviously hooks up to the green screw and the other ones hook up to the um, other two screws it's very simple so uh, we got switch one switch two we got our different switch legs and the way that I will usually do it just to make it simple when you go to put the fan up on a fan they're gonna have a black and you're going to have a blue. So the way that I will do it is I will hook the black up to the black on the fan, which controls the actual fan portion of that fan. So the way that I will usually do it is I'll decide which, which one of those switches the homeowner is probably going to use the most. Now the fan is located over that way, the, the, where the actual fan and light will be. The red will hook up to the blue wire, which is going to control the light. And some in most if it's just going to be a fan and light I will go ahead and put this uh, red wire for the light over here on this switch the reason I do that is because then that's going to be the switch that they're probably going to use the most to build a C however in this case we have a bunch of can lights and usually when there's can lights that is going to be the go-to light that the homeowner will use and they will pretty much only use the actual fan function on the fan so in that case I'm going to put the fan over here and I just lightly you don't do it super hard just lightly kind of twist them together so that then you have switch one switch two real easy for anybody to just come in here and do it there is no code on how long pigtails need to be but again I like to have a little extra I keep it around six to seven inches so you got the two switches and then just fold those two switches up to the side that they're going to be on nice and neat it's all neat easy keeps out of their out of the uh, sheet rockers way or whoever's doing that and just push them in there with the east wing and now you have whenever they kind of put in switches after the walls are up they can pull it out and that's all the wires they need for the for that switch they don't have to sit here and try and figure out, oh, which wire was what later. Because when it's, if, if you don't have anything labeled at that point, it becomes very difficult because you can't see which wires. Like, if I didn't know which ones went where, I could at least right now follow the wire around and that one up through and figure out where they go. But once the sheetrock's on the wall, you can't do that. So that's how I will do those now at this point. Anyone can pull this out and they get switch one, switch two, super easy.